Hello world, first in your roundup of hacking news, in what has turned out to be a security disaster of epic proportions, the Android manufacturer behind the Nothing Phone published a YouTube video titled, We Made iMessage for Android. We've developed an app that allows you to iMessage from Android. You've likely heard of the blue bubble, green bubble debate. First product that we're building is called Nothing Chat. Yeah, with the Nothing Phone 2, you can uh, blue bubble and camouflage yourself. <laughs> And that's the whole point of this. Nothing Chat, as it's being called, makes it so Android users can finally achieve the coveted blue bubble. Whilst Nothing hasn't confirmed exactly how this all works, behind the scenes, they told Marquez that... When you sign in with an Apple ID, it's literally signing in on some Mac Mini in a server farm somewhere. And that Mac Mini will then do all of the routing for you to make this happen. Makes sense. Though, doesn't this introduce some privacy problems? I mean, iMessage itself is end-to-end -end encrypted, but this encryption would only apply to messages sent between Nothing's Mac Minis and the recipient of the message. But how would messages be secure whilst they're being sent between your phone and Nothing's Mac Mini? Well, don't worry about that, because Nothing claims that they found a way to preserve Apple's encryption. They say on their website that all chat messages are end-to-end -end encrypted, and their CEO has some comforting words. There's no data saved on the platform, it's all local on your device, so your users don't have to worry about the privacy. Exciting to see how people are going to react to this once we release it. Well, well, those turned out to be famous last words, because merely hours after Nothing Chat was released in the Play Store, it was absolutely torn to shreds by security researchers. The first problem is that the app in some cases wasn't even using HTTPS. Rather, authentication tokens are sent in plain text. So if you were, for example, using a public Wi-Fi hotspot, it would be easy for an attacker to intercept your token, which would give them complete access to all your messages. Which brings us to the next problem. An attacker is only able to access your messages with that token because the promise of end-to-end -end encryption seems to be a lie. Researchers demonstrated that with just 23 lines of code, an attacker can leverage a token to download your messages that are stored on nothing servers. If these messages were really end-to-end -end encrypted, at this point, you wouldn't even be able to read them. They just appear to be long strings of nonsense. And last, but not least, is that Nothing Chat uses a platform called Sentry to log errors, which in of itself isn't a problem, except it seems that all messages you send are logged as errors. So theoretically, employees working at Nothing could easily read your texts from their Sentry dashboard. Nothing Chat is, or should I say was, a privacy nightmare in the truest sense, because barely 24 hours after it was released, Nothing tweeted that they removed Nothing Chat's beta from the Play Store, claiming that all the critical design flaws in their app are nothing but several bugs, only to be community noted. And it turns out this was all for, well, nothing. Because in the wake of the disaster, Apple announced that RCS support is coming to iPhone next year. RCS, or Rich Communication Services, will finally bridge the divides between Android and iOS messaging. Things like read receipts, typing indicators, high quality images and videos will all now be cross-platform. But don't get your hopes up, green bubbles for Android users will remain. The FBI is investigating the hack of a nuclear research facility in Idaho after extensive personal details of thousands of its employees were leaked. Who could be behind such an operation? Self-described gay furry hackers, apparently, in the form of SiegeSec, a hacktivist group that has a reputation for doing things differently. They announced the breach in their Telegram channel. Meow, 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 meow. We've successfully gained access to Idaho National Laboratory. After exfiltrating the sensitive data of its employees from HR systems, they didn't set a ransom, but rather leaked the data for free. Now, according to Wikipedia, this research facility is massive. It has about 6,000 employees, and given the leaked database has details on 6,500 employees, I think it's safe to say this impacts everyone who works there. However, SiegeSec gave the facility an ultimatum, saying, we're willing to make a deal with Idaho National Laboratory. If they research creating IRL cat girls, we will take down this post. It's been interesting to watch how more serious publications have reported on this. The Register said, the creation of real cat-human-female hybrids is a frequently posted meme in certain corners of the internet, but it's not the laboratory's speciality. SiegeSec hasn't given a motive for going after the facility, but I'm going to go out on a limb here and say it was purely for the lulz. In fact, they ended their announcement of the hack with a super secret encoded message, which seems to be hex values that I think confirm lulz was probably the motive here. 
Whilst this might all be fun and games to SiegeSec, this hack could have IRL consequences. The breach is basically a dox of every employee, which contains stuff you'd expect, like names, addresses, and social security numbers. But it goes a bit further and specifies their job at the facility, which could make it easier for other adversaries, perhaps foreign governments, to launch further operations targeting the place. I mean, Russian state-sponsored hackers targeted US nuclear scientists as recent as this year. Anything with nuclear in its name often becomes a target for states-backed hackers. Whilst SiegeSec had the spotlight on them, they announced another hack, this time leaking the government employee records from the city of Hendersonville, North Carolina. After gaining access to some kind of a web portal operated by the government, they announced the hack to employees with memes. Is the problem of SIM swapping finally coming to an end? In the US at least. Well, the FCC has unveiled new rules with the aim of doing just that. The new rules will require wireless providers to adopt secure methods of authenticating a customer before redirecting a customer's phone number to a new device or provider. Great, but what does secure methods mean exactly? Well, they don't say which is the whole problem with these new rules, because it's all up to the cell carriers to come up with their own interpretation. They might start requiring you to set some kind of a password, which you'll need to confirm before your number can be transferred to a new SIM. But the devil is in the detail. Would the cell carrier employee be able to see the password and just require you to verbally confirm it over a phone call? I mean, it's quite common for SIM swapping groups to have insiders, as in employees working at cell carriers who do the dirty work for them. The new rules also require carriers to immediately notify customers whenever a SIM change or port out request is made on customers' accounts. But what does immediately mean? Does sticking a notification letter in the mail immediately count? By the time you open it, it could all be over. The new rules are vague and underwhelming, especially when you understand that the scale of SIM swapping goes a hell of a lot further than just kids hacking famous YouTubers. In 2021 alone, the FBI received 1,600 reports of SIM swapping, which resulted in $68 million being stolen. That's about 40K for each SIM swap, usually in the form of crypto nabbed from a crypto wallet thanks to the victim using SMS-based two-factor authentication. Apart from just not using SMS-based 2FA, which is actually sometimes impossible because I tend to find many banks use it exclusively, what solutions are there? One idea, recently implemented in India, is to prevent you from receiving any SMSs for 24 hours following a SIM card change. Whilst not perfect, it would at least give you some time to realize your data plan has stopped working and call your cell carrier to get to the bottom of it. Or why not just make SMS-based 2FA illegal altogether? I'd struggle not to get on board with that. And something else you definitely won't struggle to get on board with is today's sponsor. Akamai Connected Cloud is your Swiss army knife for cloud computing. These guys can handle everything cloud, and they're giving you a $100 60-day credit just to get started. One of their features that I love is their app marketplace, which makes it super easy to spin up servers with pre-configured software. Need an instance of Kali? Just configure the basics with their installer and you're done. So click the link in the description now to claim your free $100 credit. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.